Hey y'all, Paul Kilo, Juliet 5, Golf Kilo Kilo, the Southern Ham. And today we are back screen porch portable for the last in our series of videos for the beginner, the first time portable operator, maybe the person with the new ticket uh, that wants to get involved in portable like Parks on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna, whatever the portable program might be, or the experienced ham who's just getting out of the shack and wants to get out there and go portable in a park. Uh, but just doesn't know what all the equipment needs. So if you look at the previous videos, uh, you understand that all of what we're going to talk about in this video, as well as the previous videos, is just my opinion. This is just my experience after a year in excess of 150 activations, uh, which isn't a, a <laughs> look, I'm no record setter, but it's enough experience where I can share. I feel like I can share the things that I wish I had known when I first got started uh, in portable operations. So uh, so we've already talked about antennas, we talked about batteries and radios, and we talked about coax. Today we're going to talk about accessories. The things that just you don't necessarily have to have, but these are things that I have found in my experience that make activating a whole lot easier. Why don't y'all come along? So the first thing I want to talk about is, is that um, you never know what's going to hit you when you're out in the field. So it's important to have uh, a box of bits and bobs and all the little things that uh, you might need to fix something. So um, it's nice to have a little case like this. I found this little plastic box at uh, Harbor Freight. It's like $5.99. Very inexpensive. I've got it full of con connectors, uh, uh, adapters, coax adapters, chokes, um, you name it. All of my little extras are in this. This is my emergency kit. Good idea to have. We won't go into the detail of everything that's in there. You'll collect these items over time and you'll need somewhere to put them. So a little inexpensive box like that is a great idea. Um, the other thing, we talked about uh, antennas and the two antennas that I recommended were a self-supporting vertical and also uh, an in-fed half wave and um, one of the things that you need well you don't need but it makes it easy uh, you got to have some way of elevating that in-fed half wave right so there's a couple things we want to talk about the first is a throw line so this little bag right here has my throw line and you can see here that i've got it all wound up this is a 16 ounce, and in all honesty, probably a little heavier than I need. I probably should have done a 14 ounce, but I have had great success with this one. Um, it's a great way to get a line up in a tree and then hoist that, uh, that end fed up in the air and get the radiating element elevated. The other thing that you can use is a mast of some kind. This, I have found, is the least expensive way to go. This is a painter's pole. It's 20 feet long. Um, more than adequate uh it's not getting it up as high as is ideal but a 20 foot because you can pick up these painter poles for i don't know 45 to 65 bucks where a good mast uh, a ham radio mast like a poda 33 or a dx engineering uh, a, a, a dx commander mast or uh, any of the other big name brand masts are going to cost you two to three times that um, so this is sufficient and I used this mask for a long time before I ever got my POTA 33, which I no longer have because I blew up the carbon fiber in the POTA 33. There's a whole video about that if you'd like to go look at it. But an inexpensive mask like this, you can lash this thing to a picnic bench. You can lash this thing to a, to a, uh, you can lean it up in a tree. You can attach it to a, a garbage can holder thing out in a park. Uh, I have a hitch mount, a uh, flagpole uh, mount that you can slide this right into, elevate it at the back of the truck, and then run the wire to your, to your picnic if that's the way things, uh, you know, work out in the park. So uh, some kind of a mast is a handy, handy item to have. Now, this is the, this is probably the most, this is the one thing that I'd say is it's an accessory. Do you have to have it? No, but I'm gonna tell you, if you wanna spend $5 on something, go get you at least one electric fence post. What I use this for is, is that once I get that radiating element elevated, what this gives me the ability to do is to put the feed point right here. I use spool tenna quite often, you've seen my videos. I'll hook the spool tenna uh, feed point right here. 
I can put this anywhere I want. I'm not reliant on having something to lash to. So this is the, um, this is the feed point. So I can work it out where I can put this right close to my picnic table within say 12, 15 feet. So I can use my RG316, a 20, 25 foot run of RG316, get right to the radio. And then I find the, the limb that works best, use the throw line to throw over, get that in fed elevated. This is a super, super versatile item and just gives you so much versatility uh, in your setup when you're out, uh, when you're out working portable. Highly recommend you have at least one. I have four of these in my truck. Never know what kind of setup I'm gonna do. Sometimes I do an elevated vertical with multiple radials, blah, blah, blah. So that's that. The electric fence post available at any of your big box stores, tractor supply, Home Depot, those kind of places. So what are some other items? Well, this one right here, a rubber mallet. Uh, rubber mallet comes in really handy. South Louisiana, uh, when we're in dry weather conditions like we are most of the summer, uh, the ground is as hard as a brick and getting that electric fence post in the ground, getting a, a stake, uh, like a, a, a tent stake in the ground uh, for guying off a, 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 you know, a vertical or guying off a, a mast of some kind or whatever you're using the spikes for, or getting a spike in the ground for uh, an elevated vertical like many systems have, a rubber mallet. Pick it up at any Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Walmart, you know, just go get you one handy, handy item to have. Um, speaking of antennas as well, um, I talked about a self-supporting vertical antenna. I use the 12 inch Wolf River coil tripod quite often with my 17 foot Chameleon SS17. One thing that I picked up that has come in extremely handy is this bag of eight cornhole bags. These are just cornhole bags. And I can, when I can lay that right on the leg of the tripod, and it provides enough weight in most conditions to keep that tripod stable. I also use them when I'm running my EMP cloth under the vertical, okay? Put one on each corner, the wind's not gonna pick it up and blow it around, it keeps it nice and flat. So four of these on the four corners of the EMP cloth, three of them on the legs of the tripod, my system is weighted down and it's not going anywhere for the price of a couple of cornhole bags. Um, Two more items that uh, I have in this display of things that I think are, are just, again, these are extras. These are things you don't have to have. So uh, if you do electronic logging, uh, I use Smart Logger on my laptop, but if you're using Smart Logger, you're using Hammers, you're using uh, uh, World Radio League, Ham 2K Polo, whatever you're using, if you're using it on a laptop or even on your phone, uh, you want to make sure that you have internet connectivity. You got to have data. Um, some cellular plans are extremely expensive. Uh, if you're going to do a lot of portable operations like I do, it is, it's, it, I have found it to be very economical to invest in a hotspot of some kind. I use this one. It's called Skyroam uh, from Solus, or, and it's, I, I think it's actually called the Solus Lite. Um, but anyway, it is just a uh, a hotspot device, uh, you turn this thing on, it finds the most, uh, uh, what do you want to say, the best connection it can from a cellular provider, so it's not particular to any one provider. It finds the best available uh, cellular connection uh, and gives me Wi-Fi. Um, and you can buy monthly plans, you can buy unlimited data plans annually. Uh, I have found that a, a monthly plan, uh, and I just started out with a low plan, as I found I was eating up too much data on that plan, I bumped up. I think I pay $15 a month for the plan that I'm on, and it gives me all the data that I would ever, ever need. Uh, the device is a little expensive, but once you have it, you've got it forever. Uh, something important to look into. But again, not a necessity. You can use your phone hotspot uh, if, you, you know, or if you have a fairly reasonably priced uh, data plan from your cellular provider. You can do that and you don't need one of these. In my case, I found it very, very uh, nice to have. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, well, not the last thing, because there is, well, let's go ahead and talk about one other thing so I don't forget, because I don't have it out here because it was too big to get out here. A good chair is important, a good chair. Um, I often operate what I call tailgate portable. So I'll lower the tailgate on my pickup truck, 
I'll put my infed up or my vertical, whatever I'm running antenna wise, and I operate from the tailgate of the pickup. Um, I had to find a chair that was the right height because most of the camp chairs that you find, I would find that the tailgate was way up here. It just didn't work. So I looked around and finally found a chair at Bass Pro Shops. And I'm going to call it, it's kind of like a director's chair, uh, but it's a camp chair, but it's, but it's a director's chair. So it's, it's a little higher. It's the perfect height for me operating tailgate portable. If you're operating out of the back of a small SUV, uh, if like if I was operating out of the back of my wife's Honda Pilot, I would need the, just a regular camp chair. That would be perfect height. It could be low to the ground because the, the back end of her car is much lower than the tailgate of my pickup. But a good chair is important. Uh, sitting at a picnic table, uh, if you're old like me and you got back issues and those kind of things, sitting at a picnic table on a, on a park bench uh, can, can get a little daunting because you have no back support. So it's nice sometimes to have a chair if you're going to be out um, operating for any length of time. So think about a good chair to add to your kit. Very important. Okay, last item we're going to talk about. And this is, again, not something that you have to have, but it's something that certainly comes in handy. So this is a, a, an analyzer, an antenna analyzer. Um, this is the Rig Expert Stick 230 is the one that I have. Now, do you need this? No, you don't need this if you're using an infed half wave that is resonant on the 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands. You don't need this. You just throw the infed up and you're good to go. You know you're gonna have an SWR probably less than 1.5 to one across the band. You're good to go. But if you're gonna use other antennas like the vertical, it is important when you're using the, the self-supporting vertical to have an analyzer because it helps you get that antenna tuned and get because ground conditions vary. So you've got your radials out, you've got your MP cloth, whatever system you're using. Um, ground conditions, uh, how many, what are the trees around you, metal objects, all of those things come into play with regard to the SWR and the efficiency of your antenna. So it's very important. Uh, in my mind, if you're going to use that antenna at some point, not right off the bat, you're a new operator, you're new to POTA, do not go spend, you know, whatever this thing costs, 250 bucks or whatever it is. I'll put links below, but don't go out there and buy this right away. This is something that you work to um, because you got to make sure that you're committed to uh, portable operations before you go out and buy any kind of, a, of an analyzer. Um, and this is just a very inexpensive one, but it serves my purpose. It gives me, it get, certainly gives me the ability to uh, run an SWR sweep on any of the antennas that I'm running. So that being said, uh, this is kind of my look at accessories. There are all kinds of things. I got a pickup truck full. I, got, I call it my poda wagon. It's full of stuff. I got all kinds of things in there. But are they all necessary? Absolutely not. Uh, these are just things that over time you just kind of accumulate. So. Thank you all for coming along on this journey of mine, sharing my experience with you about my, in this case, Parks on the Air or POTA experience and what I have found uh, that I think a new operator, someone new to portable, uh, should consider putting a kit together so that you can get out in a park and have a successful activation. Because that's all I want, is for you to be able to get out and enjoy POTA. Discovering POTA, Parks on the Air for me, has been it's just been the most amazing journey uh, aside from my wife and my kids uh, and family. It's just been the most amazing journey of my life. I'm so glad that I found this hobby in my retirement. I encourage others to get out. So if you're in the ham shack and you've been in there for 20 years or 30 years and you love ham radio, but you've never gotten outside and operated portable, give it a shot. Give it a shot. Go out there and give it a shot. You will absolutely love it, I can promise you. And if you're new to the hobby, I think this is a great way to get out there, especially if you're compromised in an HOA like I am. You live in an apartment, you're somewhere where you can't have a shack with a you know big exterior antennas. Portable operations is made for you. Anyway, that's my look at accessories. Thank y'all for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed this video series. Please share with others. If you like what you see on the channel, you know what to do. Hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. That really means a lot to me. And hit that notification bell. That way you know the next time the Southern Ham drops a video. Thank y'all for coming along. 7-3.